Uh, many of you were <clears throat> in this very building in 2016 when a county attorney, Pete Orpit, made a rousing speech about sexual exploitation in a, yeah, you've got some up and down here, that's great, about exploitation that was sh uh, happening in our own backyard. From there, a, a group of strangers uh, were asked to come into Pete's office, and uh, Pete just challenged us to do something. And he said, start a nonprofit, and he literally left the room <laughs> for us to figure out what to do. So in June of 2017, CAST was born. I got to tell you, it was enthusiastically supported by so many people in this room. You individually, uh, the, the, the county, uh, the police department, uh, Oak Marsh, for heaven's sakes, it was just overwhelming support. We are so grateful. We started our preventative work by speaking in schools and youth groups and community groups and have continued for the last six years. We are currently attempting to fulfill overwhelming requests from groups in the Twin Cities as well as Wisconsin, Western Wisconsin and as far as Duluth. Some of you maybe watched news yesterday, this morning. I witnessed this bipartisan Senate hearing of these largest social media companies get grilled by senators for hours. And the purpose was to address this growing trend um, that's, that children are being exploited through their computers as well as their phones. And there was that one remarkable moment when Mark Zuckerberg stood up and he turned around and he looked at the, the parents of the victims and he apologized. These are, these are traumatized families having, being acknowledged for what they've gone through. Many observers would uh, agree that we may be on the verge of change when it comes to exploitation, but CAST is not waiting for the Congress. <laughs> we believe we are on the verge of significant opportunities to equip parents, grandparents, children to protect the most vulnerable. So with that being said, I want to introduce the most remarkable leader of our effort to end exploitation in our community, Ashley Moore. Um, but thank you all so much for carving time out of your busy schedules and the incredible work that you're doing, whether it's internships and students, whether it's owning businesses, managing teams, and yet you're here to listen about an issue that is meaningful to us, and that is impacting our community at epidemic levels. And so thank you for carving out your time to do so. So yes, I'm Ashley. I'm the executive, executive director of CAST, Citizens Against Sex Trafficking. And our mission at CAST is to empower our community to end sexual exploitation. So I think our name at times can be a bit misleading. So Citizens Against Sex Trafficking, which is true. But our mission is to empower our community to end sexual exploitation. How many of you are familiar with the term human trafficking? Okay. How many of you are familiar with the term of human or sexual exploitation? Okay, if I called on you right now to give a one sentence summary of what sexual exploitation is, how many of you feel like you have a confident answer? Right? It's one of those things where it's like you know it, but you don't know it, but you know it. And so for us, that's what we want to do is help give clarity to a complex issue. So at CAST, our definition of sexual exploitation is causing harm sexually for gain. Gain could be money, it could be power, but it could also be popularity. In the United States, currently 30 to 40% of predators are teenagers. 
So it's not just the creepy person lurking in the bushes, and I'm not encouraging you to go into any vans with someone promising candy or puppies or for me books. They offer free books. Don't do it. Um, but the reality is, is that exploitation is complex and it's something that involves multiple generations. It involves all ages, all genders, all identities. It's something that happens to each and every person or it could. <coughs> And so when we have these perceptions of who a sex trafficking victim is or who an exploitive victim is, we need to broaden our understanding because we have this perception that it's something that's over there. If, how many of you have seen the movie Sound of Freedom that came out this summer, right? So it's something that took place that involved a kidnapping situation that led into human trafficking in a different country. And so often we hear people saying, oh, that's what human trafficking looks like. But what about the human trafficking that's happening here in Oakdale? Because trafficking is in our backyard, but for many people, exploitation is now in your house in the form of your cell phone or your laptop. And so for sexual exploitation, it is causing harm sexually for gain. And so a few examples of this, there are so many smaller boxes that can go under here. I added six that we come across most often, and that includes sex trafficking, which is something that we do work to fight against. It also includes situations like sextortion, which is blackmailing someone over sexualized content. We have had quite a few school requests coming in because of their elementary and middle school and high school students being traumatized by sextortion, where classmates have a sleepover, they take photos, and then they say, you have to do all my homework for the year or I'm sending your photo out to everyone at school. We had one school reach out to us that said sextortion, or sexting, which is sending that imagery, was rampant among their fourth graders. And it was, they asked us what the youngest age we can come and present for us. Currently, our programming is for sixth grade. But for, for them, they had sextortion cases that were happening in sixth grade. And so what do we need to do is recognize that exploitation is much bigger than just sex trafficking. It includes it, but it is so much more. It includes things like survival sex, having to trade your body in order to get your basic needs met. In the Twin Cities, that includes the suburban area as well. The average um, youth, homeless youth is approached for sex within the first 40 hours of being on the streets. From my experience as someone who has worked with survivors in the local community, that number is much closer from my experience to about 12 hours. So not even a full night of being on the streets and being approached for, hey, do you need a place to stay? Here's what you have to do in order to have that roof over your head. And, a non-Minnesota winter that's looking like the current one we have now. But when it's 20 below and those are your options, what do you do? We also talk about sexual abuse and sexual harassment and sugaring, which is where you enter into a relationship and receive luxury items, but you have to trade your body or it's expected that you trade your body in exchange for those luxury items. So sexual exploitation is so much more than sex trafficking, even though that is a key piece of what we do. But trying to define that for the community and invite people into that conversation can be tricky. But that's why we wanna step into that space. So in the anti-trafficking movement, often there's three pillars that make up the anti-trafficking movement. There's prevention, intervention, restoration. So for CAST, we focus on prevention. And that means to end trafficking and exploitation before it begins. Intervention, which you often see with law enforcement on freedom flight or sting operations, removing someone from an exploitive situation. Or restoration, which I think is what most people come across, is victim services, residential and casework programs. So one frequently asked question we get at CAST is do we provide direct client services? The answer is no. Our lane is to connect with you to end it before someone needs those services. So we do that in the form of prevention through education, awareness, and collaboration. 
So for education, we believe knowledge is power. We are licensed to teach a nationwide curriculum called Power Over Predators. It goes into middle school and high schools to teach students how to identify traps predators use, to understand internet safety, and how to distinguish between healthy and toxic relationships. 93% of the time, the predator is someone the victim knows. They have a connection with that person. Most common is romantic partner. Second most common type is family member. So how do you distinguish healthy and toxic relationships? And that's been a key piece. We also do staff trainings, and we do human trafficking 101 presentations. We also do parent workshops, teaching parents how do you have a healthy conversation with your child about this topic in a way that's age appropriate. And how do you handle something that feels really scary, really daunting, really complex, especially when children are being exposed to this content younger and younger? We also believe in awareness. It's hard to fix a problem if you don't know it exists. This is something that has been the most abstract of what we do, and yet it's been one of the most exciting and rewarding. And so for awareness, we want to embrace culture shift. We want to help people get comfortable with the uncomfortable, which means we have to come and hang out with you in the community. So for example, on Super Bowl Sunday, if you're shopping at Kowalski's grocery store here in Woodbury, you're going to see a few of us with our cast t-shirts saying, hey, do you know the relationship between sporting events and sexual exploitation? <laughs> Oh, it's, it's very, there's some people who the faces are priceless, but for some, it's been so incredible to hear the stories. I last year had a gentleman, I helped carry his bags out to his car, and he was like, where were you two weeks ago? And I was like, can you share a little more? And he's like, yeah, my niece was recovered two weeks ago from meeting someone online that she thought was at her school and she went off on a vacation with that person and disappeared for two weeks. And we just found her two weeks ago. Where were you? And for us, I asked him, I was like, was there anything I could have told you to month ago you to get you to listen to the power of prevention? And he's like, I don't know. That's our barrier with awareness, is how do we invite you into this conversation and help you embrace this before you need it. Because once you need it, there's a lot of harm that's done. And we want to get ahead of it. And we want to invite you into that space. So that's what we do with awareness. We also are at events like Woodbury Days, Summer Fest, Strawberry Fest. We have a booth with a trivia wheel with age appropriate questions from anywhere from little littles up to adults all about prevention questions. So for little kids, if you feel scared, who's a person you can talk to? For an adult, what is catfishing? All of these different questions to be able to help kids understand, go to an adult you trust and keep going till you feel heard. And for catfishing, understanding that pretending to be someone online that you're not is a huge issue that is happening for online social media exploitation. So that's what we do for our awareness. And finally, collaboration. We are stronger together. And so we connect. Almost all of our programming is done in partnership with law enforcement, with schools, with businesses, with community groups, with individuals who care, because we are better together. And so we do all of our programming for awareness and education in collaboration with others. So why prevention? And a few of those statistics, I shared a few pieces. But for what's happening in our backyard, to just reinforce the truth that this is not an over there issue, the Twin Cities, the FBI, identified us as one of 13 cities with disproportionately high rates of child sex trafficking. The largest sextortion case in US history in 2022 took place here in St. Paul, 15 minutes from this room, which had over 1,100 victims impacted. The average age of entry into exploitation in the Twin Cities is 11 to 14. 
Although exposure to sexualized and explicit content is on average age of exposure is about eight in the United States with studies showing as young as six. And that escalation point happens around the age of 10 where it includes violent pornography with kink and violence with studies showing as young as eight. And so for adults too in this room, if you have family, kids, grandkids, if you have people in your community with those kids in that age group, oftentimes the feedback we get is, well, this is a very adult topic. Unfortunately, predators aren't waiting for a certain age to start exploiting. And so we wanna meet you where you're at in an age appropriate way. And the 2019 Minnesota Student Health Survey, over 5,000 students in Minnesota shared that they have traded their body for something of value. And with that, one of the goals for this year for us, that was the 2019 Minnesota Student Health Survey, we want to find out what are all the post-pandemic statistics. For example, since the pandemic or over the course of the pandemic, child pornography has increased by over 5,000% online. And so it's happening in our backyard. It is happening on our phones and computers. <coughs> but why prevention? That's why. The people on the screen. The people in this room. Every person is priceless and worth protecting. And so why prevention? In Minnesota, for every dollar spent in human trafficking prevention, saves Minnesota taxpayers $34 on victim services. It's a one to 34 ratio. So if you have $10, a $340 impact. If you have $10,000, a $340,000 impact. It's huge. But it's because we want to protect upfront. As someone, for me, I have worked with victims and survivors. I have seen the impact it has had on their life. I've had clients that had been out of the life for over 30 years, can't hold a job, feel afraid to leave their house, have to go to intensive therapy five days a week. All of these resources invest investing to help pick up pieces that should have never been broken to begin with. And that's what we're about at CAST. So what are we doing and what is our impact? So I shared a little of what we've done, but here's the stepping stone of how we're moving forward. So, so far, we've been around since 2017. We have connected with over 1,800 students, middle school and high school students, with our Power for Predators program. We have done staff training for the South Washington County School District, teaching just over 2,300 staff members how to identify and appropriately respond to signs of sexual exploitation at school. That includes bus drivers, recess monitors, janitors, HR staff, not just teachers. And we've also connected with over 11,000 community members. So we've been here, we've been working, but we have got so much more beautiful work to do. Because this issue is heavy, this is, this is intense, but for us, we don't just want to care about the numbers of how many people we've reached, we want to measure the actual change we're making. And so as we're growing as an organization, this is how we are defining success. We are gonna be deepening our measurements in a change in attitude, a change in knowledge, and a change in behavior. Which means we're probably gonna be asking you all a lot more community surveys and questions coming up. And so we wanna know how the work we're doing and our presence is actually cultivating that prevention and change. It's hard for us in prevention, especially for me, being in every facet of the anti-trafficking movement. When you work in victim services, you know the numbers. You know how many residents you have. You know what benchmarks they make. You can share the progress you make. But in prevention, you give a presentation to a school, and that information, they might use that day, but they might use that information two months from now, two years from now, 20 years from now, how do you measure that long-term change in the short term? And it's been really exciting to be able to start asking those intentional questions and start seeing those impacts on a deeper level. And so for us, collaboration is one of our key pillars. 
As I've said before, it takes a village. We are better together. And together we can end exploitation before it begins. And every person has a place in the anti-trafficking movement. You do not have to have a master's degree in international criminology in order to participate. You do not have to have this be your long-term career in order for you to make meaningful change. You can be a business owner and still help us. And so in order to do that, we want to encourage you to share. It's cheesy, but sharing is caring is a cliche for a reason. And so for us, if you want to share your time in the form of volunteering with us, you could volunteer at events. You could also join one of our board subcommittees. If you have professional experience that you want to share insight, we want to build out our education awareness board subcommittee. Ruth Ann right here, I'm pointing at you. She's in charge of it. So if you're interested, come talk to her about it. We have other board subcommittees too that we would love wisdom and insight for. Sharing your resources. If you have the ability to share financially, we would be grateful because every dollar makes a significant difference. But also, are there other opportunities to share resources? For us, printing at one time was a major barrier. And we had Shepherd of the Valley Lutheran Church say, we will do all of your printing for all of your Power Over Predator materials now. And so that allowed us to be able to print all the resources we need for each and every student. There are other tangible opportunities to be able to give back to if you have the capacity to share those resources. And also for our office space, helping us find spaces to be able to get our work done. So Crossroads Property, thank you for allowing us to have meetings in your venues and be able to host opportunities there. And then sharing connections. If you have staff training, if you have schools, community groups, groups of parents, we had one mom who was like, our kids are gone at camp this summer. Can we just like come in our PJs and learn about this hard topic? And I'm like, absolutely. So I met with a group of eight moms who just wanted to learn about this issue. We want to come to you and make this as accessible to you as possible. So if you have connections that you can help us get into different staff trainings, school presentations, or even helping us connect with different employment opportunities. We're looking for a fund development officer. If there's opportunities for that, we would be so grateful if you can help connect us to the right person. And finally, we have an opportunity coming up on February 22nd and 29th. It is our Power Over Predators series. And so you can see our school curriculum in action. And so it's open to the public. You can be, you can bring all of your friends, you can bring your family. If you wanna bring students, sixth grade and up is what the curriculum is designed for. But come see the work that we do. There are flyers at every table as well. It's free, open to the public, just wanting to share the work that we do with everyone. Together we can end exploitation before it begins. And I know this is deep and heavy, but that's why we wanna bring life and hope and joy. Because at CAST, it's not just about citizens against sex trafficking, but what are we citizens for? We are citizens for life and hope and joy and a world filled with joy of opportunities and that we are not weighed down by the trauma someone else chose to harmfully put on us. So together, let's build that better future. Thank you.